welcome to um, to to meeting with us, and um, I want to just ap um, express appreciation to you for finding out time um, to join us on the on this party. Um, we recognize that um, your schedule is extremely busy at this point, so um, we'll just go through to it. Just as a way of background, um, most of our audience are um, corporate councils, company secretaries, in-house counsel, head of legal, and generally practitioners of, of corporate law. So we also have um, one or two members of the print media who will also be giving it some, some press coverage. Um, so I know you, and I know I'm sure a lot of people know you, um, but I'll just quickly run through your profile for um, a few of our audience that uh, are not privileged to know about you. So we'll, today's uh, um, discussion will be with, with Mr. Apata. He's our guest today, and um, he was born in 1972, and it was, he had his education at the King's College, Lagos, from where he proceeded to study law at the University of Benin, where he graduated in 1992. He was called to the Nigerian Bar in 1993, and he was privileged to cut his teeth in legal practice under the tutelage of the late great sage, Dr. Mudiaga Odiji, SEN OFR, who at the time was one of the most seasoned litigators, where he also, he also learned the rudiments of litigation and courtroom advocacy under him. In 1996, Ms. He relocated to Lagos and teamed up with his cousin, Ogugu Apata, who had just set up the law firm Templars the previous year. After owning his skills in the firm of F.O. Akinrele and co under the leadership of the legendary Chief Frank Oduayo Akinrele, S.A.N. From 1996 till date, he has worked with Ogugu and other colleagues at Templars in building and sustaining a world class, multi sectoral, and full service law firm who is now in the 25th year of his existence, and which consists of over 100 fee earners, including two senior advocates of Nigeria. He's currently the senior partner and head of the corporate and commercial practice group of Templars, which comprises the following practice areas, mergers and acquisition, capital markets, corporate law, labor and employment, immigration, telecoms, media, entertainment and technology, and regulatory compliance. He has been involved in significant and landmark um, transactions, some of which include advising the Nigerian Bureau of Public Enterprises on the restructuring and unbundling of the now defunct state-owned power monopoly, which was previously known as National Electric Power Authority, which ultimately resulted in the several successor companies to Nepal and now largely privatized Nigerian power sector. He also advised on the acquisition of the National Fertilizer Company of Nigeria by a group of Nigerian investors in a $152 million asset purchase transaction under the privatization program of the federal government of Nigeria. He has also advised General Electric on strategic acquisition that the establishment of General Electric's oil and gas operations in Nigeria. Additionally, he's also been involved in advising the American Tower Corporation in its $1.5 billion, $1.05 billion acquisition of telecommunications towers and passive infrastructure business from Ether Works, Ether Networks Limited. He's been, for a lot of us, we know him in the Nigerian Bar Association and he's been participating in the activities of the Nigerian Bar Association since 1996, when he joined the League, MBA Lagos branch. He was a foundation member of the Nige MBA SBL and he also worked closely with the pioneer chairman of the section, Mr. George Etumi and his team to operationalize the section after its inauguration in December 2004 by the then president of the NBA, Chibayo of USAM. He has been a member of the planning committee also who organized the very first NBA SBL conference. His active participation in the Niger NBA SBL led to his election in January 2012 as secretary of the NBA SBL council. He was also elected Vice Chairman in August 2014, and then as Chairman in August 2016, after which he handed over to the current Chairman, uh, Seni Adio SAN, although he remains a member of the Council. His two-year tenure as Chairman of the NBA SBL was eventful and impactful, and he uh, was involved in strategic and significant strides, um, which was recorded by the NBA SBL at the time. We can go on and on and on, 
but I'm sure a lot of people already know um, about your strides. Um, I will then ask that you join me as I welcome to this politic day, Mr. Olumide Akpata. Welcome again, sir. Thank you. Thank you, my dear brother. Thank you so much. How All right, sir. How, how's it at Bega? Oh, well, we thank God we're trying to survive. <laughs> it's a tough period. Um, but tough. We, 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 we are doing it. It's a tough time. All right, sir. All right, sir. Before we go into the questions, I'll just drop a few ground rules to our audience who um, will be participating and be having and be sending in some questions. Um, please do ensure and um, to drop your questions in the Q&A box um, so that we can clearly know your questions um, as different from your, um, your, your chat which you may be having with your colleagues. And it will be also good for you to indicate your name and your position so that we can properly address you. Thank you very much. So I'll just go straight to the questions, which we have a lot, because a lot of lawyers have indicated interest in, in, in having this question. So Mr. Akwada, the first question um, we want to ask you is, if you are elected president of the Nigerian Bar Association, considering the fact that most of our audience are general counsels and corporate counsels mm -hmm. and in-house um, advisors, we want to know what your distinct plan will be for this category of lawyers if elected the Nigerian Bar Association president. Thank you, thank you. I'm grateful for the opportunity. Um, firstly, let me thank uh, Corporate Council who put this together. It is very, very gratifying to note that um, uh, our, our colleagues uh, in, who are in-house uh, are taking a, a, a keener interest in, in what is going on at the bar. I say this because I know that uh, in, uh, in previous years, there has been uh, a bit of apathy, uh, not Apologies, um, I, think we, I think we lost you briefly there. Um. So can you hear me now? Okay, yes, we can hear you now. Can you? Okay, I really apologize. I, I'm, I hope, uh, I hope uh, um, technology will not fail us today. But anyway, to go straight to the point, what <laughs> okay. specific plans I have for, uh, for corporate counsel? Well, firstly, the plan is to run an all-inclusive bar. An all-inclusive bar because uh, um, um, the sentiment is out there and it's pervasive that the law or the law legal profession is um, skewed to favor. Mm. I think we've lost. Um... I think we lost you again. Um, I don't know. Oh, only one group of lawyers, those okay. who don't the wig and the gown are litigators and go to court every day. Um, so those are. I think we might have lost um, Mr. Partha there. Um, nonetheless, I think we should we can use this opportunity to be um, 
gathering our questions together and then we'll be um, dropping it in the Q&A uh, box so that um, when it comes back online, we can, we can just gather the questions together and um, ask him uh, uh, accordingly. I see he's trying to reconnect. Um, I'm sure in due course he's going to be connected and he'll be able to answer our questions accordingly. So please, um, your questions, please keep dropping it in the Q&A um, second box. Um, as against the chat box, like I said, and if possible, uh, try as much as possible to indicate your name and your, your position so that I can recognize and I can um, acknowledge um, accordingly. Um, I don't know if Mr. Pata can hear me now. I, uh, can you hear me? Oh. I think today is one of those days when technology has not been kind to us. Okay. Um, we, so we have a question here. Um, we'll be taking it once um, Mr. Pata comes back online. Uh, I've, I've seen it here. But I also encourage every other person to um, drop the questions in and so that um, we can use this time to be compiling the questions um, we have for him um, when he comes back online. So I see um, a comment from Chine Du also to all panelists and attendees. Um, good to have you here also. I see him saying good afternoon, everybody, and it's great to be here. It's also great to have you here also. Um, again, I just want to mention that um, your questions should be um, dropped in the Q&A section while um, your comments can go to the chat section. Uh, we have him back online now, so thank you. Nice to have you back. Are we good? I see. Yes, we are good now. I, I, we can hear you clearly now. You know, uh, you know I'm, 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 I'm trying to, I was trying to juggle service providers. Let's see if this will be better. Yes, I think this is better. It, it's, it sounds clear. Okay, sir. So you were, um, you were speaking so, so about your plans, yes. Yeah, so I was saying that um, it would be important, firstly, there, there, are, there are a myriad of issues that the in-house council would like to see addressed, you know, mm. by the MBA. And what better way than to make sure that they have a seat in the room, mm. yeah, right, when these issues are being contemplated or being debated, rather mm. than for them to hear secondhand what decisions have been made that would affect, you know, the, the, the way they practice their own, their, their profession. So for mm. me, it is critical that in-house counsel, you right, are part of the process of decision making so mm. that they, there's a, there's a, there's a buy-in from the get-go. Mm. So uh, in-house counsel still ask me till today, why mm. is it that the constitution clearly forbids us from mm. vying for the president of the bar, mm. right? Now, yes. the reason why they would ask that question is because they probably were never in the room when those decisions were made. Mm. And in responding to those issues, I say to them, well, this is my understanding as to why that particular provision was mm. put in the constitution. I think it's important mm. that from time to time, we revisit, we revisit that particular issue. That from time mm. to time, if represented in house council, were in the room or are in the room when these issues are being discussed, it can be canvassed again. Hey, gentlemen, 
Can we go back and check this part of our constitution? It may have been a valid point 50 years ago, yeah. but is this still yeah. a valid point? Should expressly mm. excluded from being able mm. to vie for the highest of organization mm. to which we belong, pay dues. You know, mm. so if you ask me, Ayokunle, I think that to deal with the problem, to bring mm. about more inclusiveness, we need to mm. make sure that in-house council are part of the conversation. Mm. Interesting. Beautiful. I, I agree with you um, because um, if, you, if we are not part of the conversation, um, if, you, if we have forum where we can make this kind of conversation and we can't find um, the corporate council, um, there will be continuous grumbling, but um, nothing will be done. Um, my, my, second, my, 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 my second question then um, goes this way. Um, recently, there was a controversy um, where a senior advocate of Nigeria advocated that other learned stakeholders should come together and ensure that um, a senior advocate of Nigeria was installed as president. What is your take on this, sir? Uh, if it is the same letter I read you are referring to, I think you, if it's the same letter I read, yes. you are um, beyond coming together to ensure that a senior advocate is installed president, that particular senior advocate, for whom I have the greatest respect, by the way, um, I, I advocated that the presidency of the MBA should be reserved for senior advocates. So let me mm. just, let's just take that all together. Mm. Uh, and then, um, you know, after a while, you know, when a practice has become convention, uh, some people forget that really it is not the rule, right? Mm. There's no doubt that senior advocates have been at the forefront of leading our association, have been at the helm of affairs for a long mm. time. But our constitution yes. is on who can be president. Yes. And once anybody, and once any individual ticks any of all of the boxes, that person can go for it. And, uh, and I have checked and I have rechecked and I tick the boxes. So, so that argument does not fly. And, um, and I must say that we cannot tar all senior advocates with the same brush. I work closely okay. with many senior advocates. Indeed, two of my partners belong to that, uh, that, uh, that category of legal practitioners. And, and, and some of them are the best minds in the profession. Mm. I dare say that we need the senior advocates if we're going to move this profession forward. But mm. uh, ability to run the MBA has really very little to do with your prowess in the courtroom. It has mm. more to do with your, your, your ability to manage men, men and resources, mm. your ability to, to, to formulate policy that will work for the good of, the, of all, not for mm. one group, your ability to galvanize people of diverse opinions. You know, mm. lawyers, not only are mm. we different, we are very opinionated. So mm. what, is, what are your PR, what are your HR skills? Mm. Are you able to get people to come together to do uh, what is good for the association? It has, pretty, it has very little to do with the fact that you wear silk, right? Mm. And, um, yes, and I must say that um, from the feedback uh, after that particular letter was published, uh, mm. we, we, we have found out now that that is indeed the minority opinion. Mm. It is indeed the minority opinion and uh, prepon the preponderance of opinion is that anyone who qualifies, go for it. And, mm. and uh, again, I must repeat that uh, uh, it, it will be an all-inclusive bar in the event that I become president. Mm. And senior advocates will very much, their, their views will very much be taken into consideration and we'll work very hard with them. They have a body called the Body of Senior Advocates. Mm. And if I, if I leave the bar, I will constantly be in consultation with them because there's no doubt they're a critical factor in our profession. But mm. um, uh, it cannot be that um, the presidency can be reserved exclusively for them. The mm. presidency of the, or chairmanship of the Body of Senior Advocates, that one can be reserved exclusively for them because mm. by, just by the name, <laughs> Of, the uh -huh. of that group, only yes. a senior advocate can be a part can of be. that particular exactly. group. But MBA itself, I, I yeah. beg to differ. I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, we have a tough question here, which I'll just throw to you immediately. So, um, an, an anonymous attendee has just asked that um, you have overflogged the issue of making sure that junior lawyers earn reasonable remuneration, even earn reasonable remuneration, if elected. 
please, how do you intend to do that? For we all know that most junior lawyers earn below the minimum wage. So what structure will you put in place to ensure that there is a huge change in that area? I, Okule, I don't think that issue can be flogged enough. So the issue of overflogging really does not arise. I think we mm. must continue to keep it on the front burner because okay. it, is, uh, it is pathetic what some of our lawyers are going through. So how mm. do we intend to uh, achieve it? We intend to leverage on um, uh, the capacity of the MBA to determine what happens in the profession. Mm. Yes, the issue of remuneration is a matter of contract. I understand mm. that very well. However, there's, there we have a, a we have a regulatory role we play, and we should be as a body we should be able to intervene in that space, even if firstly from the level of persuasion, from the le level of moral suasion, and then also we will put in disincentives so that those who are badly behaved will desist from that kind of behavior. So, for mm -hmm. example, as the MBA, we are saying what we'll be looking at in the event that I become president is how lawyers can earn a living wage. So mm. there, will be, there, will be a, there will be an empirical uh, uh, method for arriving at this. So living wage in Lagos is not living wage in Damatu, neither is mm. it living wage in Okichibupa. So we will firstly determine that this is living wage. So number one, you know that there's a legal practitioners remuneration committee. Unfortunately, yeah. that committee is not under our control. It is run by the attorney general. So mm. the NBA will set up its own remuneration body that looks into how lawyers are paid. Now. Mm. We will, we will engage, for example, with Burger Pigs and mm. uh, organizations like yours that mm. retain lawyers. Mm. This is just one example. And, and, it's a, and it's a young lawyer who, in the course of our thrashing out these issues, that even suggested that we could do this, right? Mm. To say, those of you who retain lawyers, just as you insist on your lawyers who work for you having a diversity policy, you mm. can also insist that lawyers who work for you must also pay a living wage. You might notice that some law firms in England at the moment, if you look at the signature uh, signature uh, column of their emails, you mm. see where they write, we are a law firm that pays a living wage. Some mm. law firms, wear, they wear that badge with pride. So mm. we, would, we would put all uh, muscle at our disposal towards ensuring that employers of lawyers subscribe to this basic minimum. Now, mm. number two, what we will also do, we will suggest to employers of lawyers that in the event that you cannot meet this minimum, because we realize that also it may be a function of incapacity, we can say to them, listen, how about organizing alternative working arrangements whereby the individual does not have to work five days a week. Mm -hmm. Let the individual work a couple of days in a week so that they can go and do other things to augment income. We mm -hmm. would also, you know, that there are many lawyers and law firms who seek one kind of benefit or the other from the association. Oh, mm. they want to come to the association because they want to be a member of one committee or the other. Or they need the association sign up, sign off so that they can be senior advocates. Of course, you can you can expect that on the checklist in an MBA under my watch, on the checklist in determining who gets what privilege or the other would be what do you pay your lawyers? Mm. What do you pay your lawyers? So my point to you is that I am mindful of the fact that um, it's a matter of contract. It is difficult to intervene in that space, but I am not going to twiddle my thumbs and sit in the corner and say, oh, there's not much I can do. MBA has the capacity, has the gravitas to mm -hmm. say to its members and to say to the public who employ lawyers that there's a basic, basic minimum we should not go below. So it's going to be a name and shame type of thing. It's going to be um, create a situation where those who don't oblige or comply will become very uncomfortable. They will become very uncomfortable because we will let everybody know. And then last but not least, lead by example. We have senior members of the profession, some who are aspiring to be president today. So anybody who says he wants to be president of the bar first and foremost, we're going to be, there should be, a, there should be the opportunity to interrogate that person. Say, mm. how, do you, how do you treat your workers? What kind of pay do you, what, what, do, you, what, do, you, what do you pay? So because you can't be president of the bar if you are paying a pittance to your lawyers, it doesn't make sense, right? Mm. If you want to do the profession, then, mm. then of course you make it you make it difficult for those who are deviant uh, mm. uh, to, to 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 persist in, in mm. their deviant. Mm. Okay, um, so I have another question, which is which can be argued to flow um, from that also. So we have a, a, a question from 
an anonymous uh, attendee who, who is asking that, sir, it is a well-known fact that a firm prefers lawyers with first class and everybody cannot graduate with first class. Are you not appro approbating and reprobating when you say that you will make sure that lawyers are gainfully employed when your own firm prefers a section to others? Uh, first and foremost, I, I wonder where we are. I wonder why we have anonymous questioners. I mean, everybody <laughs> should be bold enough and happy enough to identify themselves in the process of asking questions. Uh, that's just an, that's just an aside. Now, okay. on the issue of, uh, on, on the issue of uh, criteria for employment, uh, mm. I don't think I'm appropriating or reprobating. I am saying that lawyers who are employed should be properly paid. Mm. That's what I have been saying, right? Yes. Lawyers who are employed should be properly paid. Now, each organization would have to set parameters, would have to set criteria for themselves with yes. regard to they can employ, right? And um, point of correction, 10 plus, we do not say first class or nothing. We say 2-1. And then for anything below 2-1, we would have to make an exception, right? Now, for us as a firm, this is where what we, this is, I should say, are you okay? Are you there? Yes, okay. Now, yes. Like, okay, at the time, okay, we, have, we have you lost me again? <laughs> no, you're back. <laughs> we lost you briefly, but you're back. Okay, so uh, we have to we have to take a decision, and this is what we do as a basic criteria. This is what we will. Uh, 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 this is what we require, right? Uh, and and um, we 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 do we do make exceptions, right? So we look at all applications on the merit. What we mm. have always expressed is this is our preference. Mm. This is our preference. And can you can you? And it's an incentive for everybody to study hard. I'm not mm. so sure I will buy the argument that not everybody can make a first class. I didn't make a first class, but I don't think that that argument will, will hold water to stay. That is the reason why an organization should not set a standard for itself, right? So basic yeah. this is the standard, this is what we would like, but we know that you can't always get what you want. So there will be circumstances in which we'll say, okay, let us, let us cast our gaze lower mm. and say, okay, maybe there might be others who would, who would uh, and then they will go through a, probably a more rigorous interview process. Mm. You know what mm. I mean? But, but um, 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 I am I'm quite, um, I'm quite confident that um, if we if we pay more attention to excellence, it will mm. encourage others. It will mm. encourage others to excel. So that's the mm. whole point. So I I I um I do not think I'm appropriating and reprobating. I definitely disagree with that uh, suggestion. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much for that clarification. Uh, we also have um, a comment from um, Khadija Osamo, we, who apparently works in Templars and says he works in Templars, she works in Templars, and the good Lord knows that she doesn't have a first class. So um, just to buttress the fact that um, there are some people that work with Templars um, that don't have a first class. Um, so our next question then is this. Um, you have said in the past that if trainings are not offered to young lawyers and aspiring lawyers in contemporary legal subjects and in a practical manner, they won't be fit for the future. Now, the question is, what is your view regarding liberalization of the Nigerian legal sector? Is capacity building synonymous with liberalization? Well, yeah, I, I, I admit to making that statement. Um, uh, yes, and I and I stand by it because we are knowledge merchants, and uh, what we what we sell is knowledge. And uh, I have been I have said before I say again, if the pipeline of knowledge uh, ceases to flow, that is an existential issue. Um, we are out of business immediately, you know. And uh, and and we live in a world where the clients are sophisticated. Um, uh, it's not enough for you to say this is the law because I said so. Uh, the law, the client is sophisticated enough to know what the law is, and uh, you know, so it's important that we create or provide platforms for knowledge mm -hmm. development. Uh, now, when you say liberalization of the legal profession, let me quickly assume that uh, this this individual asking the question is referring to uh, um, 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 us opening our borders 
and exactly. uh, allowing uh, 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 non-Nigerian practitioners and all of that foreigners to, to operate in this sector. My views on this issue in this jurisdiction, sorry, my views on this issue have been are clear and I've made them known from time. Um, liberalization is a good thing, and we, as, a, as our jurisdiction, has continued to engage with the rest of the world. As you know, um, the, the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement that we have subscribed to includes the movement of services around the continent. And so lawyers around the continent will be free to come into uh, Nigeria, subject, of course, to extant rules and regulations. They will be mm. able to practice. Nigeria. And I have always said that um, um, the, the barriers or the boundaries that we have erected with regard to the movement of legal services, they're, they're artificial, you know, mm. and uh, they're not sustainable. Um, and I think uh, protectionism runs counter to a globalized world that we all say we want. So there's mm. no doubt about that. Uh, that's mm. me being a realist and me being pragmatic. However, I also believe that there's something to be said for affirmative action. Mm. I'm also, I also believe that there's something to be said about the creation of a dispensation that allows for a jurisdiction to, um, to catch up, allows for a jurisdiction to, to build capacity, right, first, yeah. so that it can compete. Mm. So as you know, I was chairman of, section of the, the section of business law. And yes. indeed, for almost 20 years, we who have been members of this section, this has been our clarion call, hmm. that it is going to be very difficult to keep others away from what is the largest economy in Africa. Hmm. And you and I know that they are, they are at the door waiting to be let in. Yes. And so we have always called, at the section of business law, we have always called and called our colleagues, take this intervening period as your opportunity to upskill as the opportunity to gain the knowledge you can get so that when that time comes, and it will come, when the profession will be liberalized and we would, uh, we would admit into this jurisdiction um, practitioners from other countries. And let me, let me tell you, even the fact that we're asking them to do 18 months law school, you know that that's not sustainable. After a while, they will come in here based on their qualifications from their own home countries. That, I foresee that future. But we're saying take advantage of it. Take the knowledge that you can and specialize. Become subject matter experts. Look for your own. And that's what we've been trying to do at the, at, at the level of the section of business law. And that is a crusade that the MBA must lead. The MBA must lead that crusade because liberalization is, a, is, a, is, a, um, is, a, is an inevitability in the world that we live in. Because anything else will be antithetical to globalization, right? Mm. If we if we if we are over overly protectionist, so take opportunity of what is going on now, gain knowledge, because I mean, how do you explain largest economy in Africa? Largest economy in Africa, we are not deliberately training our lawyers to service the various sectors of this economy. Mm. Nature abhors the vacuum. If you don't train the lawyers that these sectors need. The, the business people, the clients are sophisticated enough to go and look for lawyers from elsewhere. Case in point, entertainment law. Before your very eyes and before mine, that is a sector that has exploded in the last 10 to 15 years. Mm. But I do not know that there's any deliberate effort to provide legal support for that sector. So I go, I go to the city in London, I walk into a law firm, and they tell me Naramali just left here. Two-Face just left here. We are their lawyers in the city of London. And I can count on the fingers of one hand the number of law firms in Nigeria that offer entertainment law as one of their areas of competence. So it's a major problem. Mm. Um, but if you ask me, as if I were to be president of MBA, what would I be advocating for in the short term? In the short term, yes. I'll be advocating that we still shut the borders. We still mm. make sure that we keep practice of the law exclusively for Nigerian trained lawyers, practice of law in Nigeria for Nigerian trained lawyers, except mm. for, of course, where the law allows for waivers. And take, take that, that opportunity to train. In the event that we need foreign practitioners to come in here, mm. they should come in here through Nigerian law firms or Nigerian lawyers so that they can be a transfer of skills, so that we can mm. learn from them, right? 
So mm. that that is I'm, yes, not, I'm not against, I'm not against liberalization. Uh, it would be it would mm. be foolhardy of me to be that way. But I am for mm. some kind of uh, um, um, I'm for some kind of um, uh, protectionism, right, in the interim, yeah. so that we yes. can skip, so that we mm. can catch up. But what I what I quarrel mm. with is our inability to use this opportunity. And we're talking for the last 20 years, this conversation, we, are, we have been having this conversation about the Nigerian legal profession skilling, upskilling and getting ready for a world where they, for a profession or, or for, for a time where they will need to be able to compete with the rest of the world. And unfortunately, we're still mm. not there, unfortunately. Not there. Mm. A beautiful, beautiful exposition there, sir. Um, and, and I want to pick on a, a point you raised um, Earlier, which was the extent that um, the 18 months um, was not sustainable for um, for foreign trained lawyers to come here to get license to practice, and we have a question from um, a Nigerian based abroad. Um, he's a partner in a law firm in Singapore, and his question is that um, that there are some Nigerian citizens abroad who are not Nigerian qualified, uh, but they are qualified to practice in a foreign jurisdiction. Um, will you be interested in facilitating their call to bar to make it automatic or at least make the process easier? Most definitely. You know, I, you know, you know, some of our laws are so, uh, <laughs> so outmoded, outdated that is unbelievable uh, that, that I think we need the presence of mind to, to institute law reform in a lot of areas. Uh, and and, uh, and uh, that presence of mind is sometimes absent because it's sometimes absent because we are distracted and we focus on so many other uh, non-issues. If you ask me, now uh, I have loads of friends who fall into this category: Nigerians who have been trained abroad. Now, as long as they have they've trained in common law jurisdictions, mm. right? I, yes. I think the way to go is as long as there is is for them to come and do a summer school for three months or whatever, and, and just generally brush their skills in, in what would be a, 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 in, a, in a bar, I think this is in a short, call, a short program at the law school so that they can catch up. This is, this is my view, so that they can align, align with what the contemporary realities are in terms of practice of law in Nigeria. You don't need 18 months for, to do that, right? Mm. Or, or, is it, or is it 18 months? I don't know what it is now. Look, in Ghana, in Ghana, all you need to do in Ghana, as long as you're coming from the common, common law jurisdiction, is you go there and you uh, you do a three-month uh, program at the Ghana Law School and you're called to the Ghanaian Bar. Although um, the Ghanaians have stopped allowing Nigerians to do that because they, see, they say fair, fair is only fair. If, if we let you Nigerians come and do three months and then you insist on us doing 18 months, Where's the reciprocity? So even though they haven't changed their rules, I can tell you for the fact that they will not admit Nigerians who are trained in Nigeria or elsewhere to come and get uh, called to the Ghanaian bar because they believe that our system is not working for them. So it's not it's not it's, um, it's not fair to them. So in answering the question from my colleague in Singapore, definitely because we need more capacity, anyways. Right. Yeah. So first and foremost, Nigerians who have been trained abroad, right, who have been trained in common law jurisdictions, yes. we will make it, I mean, we will make it easier, much, I mean, well, let's put it this way, to the extent that it is in our powers to, to do. as MBA, we will pursue uh, 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 policies, the formulation of policies that will make it easier for them to come and, and, and be admitted to these jurisdictions almost seamlessly. Mm. Thank you so much for that. That's quite, quite insightful. Um, so I'll just jump straight to my next question. Um, so at a recent interview you granted with a print media organization, you said, in the course of your involvement in the activity of the Nigerian Bar Association, you noted that there was widespread sentiment within the profession that the NBA is grossly lacking in utilitarian value, and that many lawyers have remained members of the association more out of compulsion. How do you intend to redress this anomaly? Yes, um, um, my feedback uh, from uh, from uh, from uh, from the Vox Pop that I have constantly 
uh, carried out is that 70% of our members are not feeling the association. They don't think they're deriving value. So that is when I say utilitarian value is, is lacking. So why am I a member of this association? Of what use is it to me? And you remember that you and I really didn't have much of a choice before we became members of the MBA. You know, it was more like a, was more like a conscription, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah. so, and so most people benefit of hindsight are saying to themselves, if I had a choice, I actually will walk away because I don't see what this association does for me. And I'm not, these are not my thoughts, right? Uh, these, are the, these are the views that I have heard expressed in many quarters that beyond paying my bar practicing fee, which I pay because it's pretty much like a gun to my head. I needed to practice the profession. I'm paying my brand dues and then going for conference and paying my conference fees. I don't see what the association does for me. Again, not my words. I'm just simply relaying. Uh, so don't shoot the message. Yeah. So, okay. so, so, so for me, that is a major problem because once your own members don't believe in your raison d'etre, don't believe in why you are there, you have a problem already because the enemy is within. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? The, you find out that the, the the worst those who demarket the association more are actually the lawyers who feel mm -hmm. hard done by who say, you are just taking my money and giving me no value. So how would I deal with that? Firstly, they must, you must get them to fall in love with the association again. And for me, first and foremost, one of the reasons why uh, our members don't feel the, the presence of the association is for very simple reasons. I think, firstly, we, we, we don't have a functional or a secretariat that is functioning optimally. So. So the, the, the average lawyer, what they really need is, they just need to feel that I belong to this group. You understand? They're in touch with me. I get updated. I know what is going on. Some people, that's basically what they need. I belong to the International Bar Association. I know that I don't need to move a mountain before I get to, get to hear from my association, the IBA. I just need to make a call, give my membership number and all my data. Yeah, it becomes available. I request for a letter. I request for a letter from the uh, IBA. Immediately is sent to me. They are responsive. But at the level of the MBA, there is that major problem, right? The MBA secretariat is suboptimal in its in its output. So that affects you know how our members you know feel. So so first and foremost, we need to go and fix that. And I tell you one of the reasons why, right? Uh, yes. uh, uh, one of the reasons why is that the way we are structured, and this is because, again, we don't take the time to review our laws. The way we are structured at the MBA, the general secretary is the chief operating officer of the secretariat. And the general secretary is there for two years. So think about it. We are firing our COO every two years. So you find out that there's no, there's no institutional, there's no continuity. Knowledge, no continuity. Right? No institutional yeah. knowledge. You know, so there's a new there's a new kid on the block every 24 months. So of course, as you can imagine, that affects the ability of the organization to to operate in an optimum manner. So mm. so even with all your best intentions, all the lofty ideas, even the ones that Olu Akwata has espoused today, right? Without a secretariat, it's not going to happen. Without a functional secretariat, you, I mean, you work in an organization, uh, you know these things are not. It's not by fluke. Mm -hmm. right? They are planned. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are planned. They are processes. You know, we, 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 we work to an expected outcome because we have put in the time, the effort. Yeah, exactly. But the MBA is not resourced in that way. So for mm -hmm. me, uh, uh, that's one of the reasons why we have people being dissatisfied. Then, of mm -hmm. course, there, there are other issues, all of which I still think uh, boil down to the functionality of the organization. But yeah, a lot of people don't think that uh, the association takes the welfare of lawyers into consideration. Yes, this, is part of, this is part of the feedback I get, giving out handouts, because I'm not in the business of giving out handouts. Welfare of lawyers, meaning what? how can they practice their profession? How can the MBA ensure that the lawyer is practicing his profession in a proficient, in a sustainable, and in a profitable manner? We, we you, you know, I could stand alone by myself, but I band together with others and into what you call association 
because I want to get benefits that I ordinarily would not be able to get by myself. Mm -hmm. Get on your own self. Mm -hmm. That's true. So what are the benefits of, you know, yes. So yeah. So what are the benefits of us coming together? You know what they say about the the lone broomstick and then the broom. You can break the boom broomstick uh, in a flash, but you can't break the broom. So we are trying to see why are we band together? What are the benefits? So for me, uh, going in there, I hit the ground running because as I tell everybody, yeah. if I become president, I have recent relevant experience. I know the association. Mm. I've observed it from close quarters. The last three presidents, I have worked closely mm. with them. So I kind of know, mm. as we say, where the bodies are buried, uh, pardon, pardon the expression. So I'm going to avoid mm. the pitfall. I'm going to, I'm going to avoid the, the mistakes. And I will go straight to the mm. point. So fix your secretariat. Be more responsive to the needs of your members, right? Create a platform where they can practice their profession proficiently, profitably, and sustainably. And you know, just let them fall in love with the association again. You know, and, and that's what I that's what I intend to do. Lawyers are harassed every day by by uh, uh, security agents. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. And what, are. what does the MBA do about that? I intend to set up a lawyers' defense fund. Anybody harassed, anybody on harassed by security agents, police, or whatever so called, the MBA would defend that person for free. The MBA will retain lawyers around the country. As long as that lawyer is carrying out, was arrested or harassed in the course of carrying out his or her professional duties, the MBA, and of course, that person has to be a member of the association, financial, of course, so that yeah. benefits will only accrue to financial mm -hmm. members. The yeah. MBA would defend that lawyer, would, and, and think about it. I'm sorry for taking, taking so much time, but think about it, the guy who is locked up in the uh, party, and a lawyer, and then he, he hears that the MBA has sent a lawyer to the police station to find out why he's been arrested. Mm -hmm. And he knows he hears that he does not need to pay for that service. Definitely that guy, when you ask him later on in the year what he thinks about the MBA, he will tell you, I love my association. Yes. It's simple. I mean, they're not, it's, not, it's not rocket science. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, these are great ideas and, and lofty ideas. Um, just to support what you said, um, at times it's easy without a, an effective secretariat, um, strategies, uh, strategy will become strategy. And we, because implementation, um, strategies will say that the strategy is not a problem, but the implementation of the strategy is usually the problem. So the secretariat is actually very, very critical um, in that regard. I'm still speaking about what um, what you said about the NBA. I, I've heard you say that if you elected the president of the NBA, you will the first thing you will do will be to go on a 24-month sabbatical from work, given the amount of work that needs to be done at the NBA. Can you give us some insight into these issues that you believe needs urgent restructuring? Yeah, so I had to come to I had to make that decision because, like I just said to you, I have been closely associated with our organization. I have worked closely. I've been section of business law chairman. I have uh, been a member of National Executive Committee for since 2014. I remain a member. I organized the last, I was co-chair of the conference planning committee for 2019. So I kind of know, I have observed that really close quarters. I know firsthand what the issues are. I've just talked to you about secretariat and the, 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 the near absence of the functional secretariat. I have talked to you about quite a number of issues. So I, I had to come to the ineluctable conclusion that we're at a point in the life of our association where anybody who becomes president will need to be hands-on real time, right? Yes. And one of the issues I have found out uh, that has militated against us making progress is, is that some of the presidents who I've observed, they mean well, right? But um, the issues are so huge. The, the problems and the, 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 the uh, challenges are so immense that you know that uh, um, that um, uh, uh, tentative, or should I let me not say tentative, but that that uh, inability to give it full attention makes it impossible for you to actually deep deep uh, take a deep dive and deal with the issues. Mm -hmm. So what you see most of our people, our, our leaders have been doing, is papering over the cracks or you know applying the band-aid to what I consider to be really, really deep wounds, mm -hmm. right? And it's, it's, not really, it's not really, it's not really there. Uh, uh, I, I won't blame anybody. 
right? Um, uh, the current president came, came in and met uh, the near absence of a functional system of uh, accounting or a functional, that, you know, the way we handle our finances was, was abysmal. But kudos and credit goes to our, our current president who has taken time to ensure that firstly, we have to handle the way we deal with our finances. So we have PwC in-house now. That is fantastic because that's a major, you know, building block towards getting a, an organization functioning in opt optimally. So I had to make that decision. I had to seek consent, the consent of my partners to ensure that they are good with me going away for 24 months on a paid leave, absence of um, focus on paid because I need them to continue paying me because I will not be paid by the FDA. <laughs> so, so they'd be kind enough to do that, but or to approve that. But, but please note that this is not, we're not trying to create a precedent here. Yes. It is indeed an aberration. It is indeed a function of the reality on ground today. My hope is that if I make this sacrifice, if we make the sacrifice, because it's also a sacrifice from the, on the part of my firm, right? We will not need, nobody else will need to do that. Okay. Because yes, I belong to a 15 man partnership, but not everybody else does. And everybody, a member of the association should be able to aspire to the highest office. So let us get that point clear. My hope is that when we are done with this, we will, nobody else will need to do that. But yeah. Yeah, the problems are deep. The problems are major. Can I just pick only one? The okay. system of education. Part of our constitution mandates us as an association to, to intervene in that space, to, to intervene in the system of legal education. And, and we have a situation where we're churning out 7,000 lawyers every year. They're not being trained for the realities of today. And it is a major conversation that we need to have. MBA needs to stand in the gap and convoke that kind of uh, uh, conversation and, and find out where the problems are. So when I was chairman of SBL, we set up, uh, we started the process of setting up what we call a Center for Commercial Law Studies. So this was us, this was us, you know, uh, adopting a self-help uh, strategy because there's the problem at the level of those who make policy. But you know what? Council of Legal Education is, is, is manned by lawyers at the level of the council and at the level of management. The university faculties, there are lawyers there. I think they just, we just need MBA to step up to the plate galvanize this group and let everybody understand that we have a responsibility to produce lawyers that are fit for purpose, fit for the now, fit for the future. And MBA, and, and, and it's not going to be a work, it's not going to be a tea party. That is why I, realized, I said to myself, listen, if you really want to do this thing well, you need to just roll up your sleeves, go in there, give the time. Because to fix the system of legal education, or at least to engineer a process that will lead to it being fixed, is going to take a lot of time. Right. This is 125 branches of the association. Another issue. For the MBA to make the impact it's supposed to make, there has to be synergy, proper alignment between national, the national HQ and our 125 branches because our members are at the level of branches. So if the national head office, headquarters is not operating you know, in alignment with the branches, we yes. can never achieve our objective. So that kind of synergy. So a couple of issues. I don't want to take too much time, but yes. I have looked at it. I've done my analysis and I will be better off if I give it all my time and achieve the results rather than, you know, do some kind of patchwork and go away and the problem is not fixed. Beautiful, sir. Beautiful. Um, so um, my next question is uh, more related to in-house council um, issues. Um, so there's this general feeling in the corporate counsel space that MBA is significantly focused and tilted towards lawyers in litigation practice. Specifically, a question was asked by Mr. Timothy Badin, who felt that the profession is rigged against corporate attorneys in terms of privileges and relevance. Um, for according to him, most of the regular content to which litigation lawyers go to court for and argue on are prepared by corporate counsels. Hence, the corporate counsels keep the litigation lawyers in business. If elected, what would the MBA under a watch do to address this perceived disparity between advocates and solicitors and therefore changes now? Uh, like I said before, I'm a realist, I'm a, I'm a pragmatic person. Uh, we are all creatures of habit. You know, when you have been doing things in a certain way, 
very difficult to get you to deviate. So this is a litigation jurisdiction. That's our reality, right? So um, those of us who are not litigators or into dispute resolution, we would have to, you know, do the extra to get our colleagues to remember that we exist, right? And to get them to understand that we not only exist, we are creating, uh, we are, we're adding value to the profession. So um, I do not wear, I wear glasses, but they are not rose colored. So I don't fool myself, right? I know that that is our reality. So we are going uphill, it's a struggle. So I always use the example of uh, uh, the uh, section of business law, our history. As you noted from my profile, I'm a founding, a founding member. Um, my, my, our, our, our most respected senior pioneer chairman of the group of the section of business law, Mr. George Tomi, led the charge at the time. Because when we went into MBA con existence, the conversations really had no bearing whatsoever on our reality. Those of us who had decided that we are going to be strictly commercial practitioners, commercial law practitioners. And, you know, like I said, human beings are creatures of habit. That is the way they have, were used to doing business at their association. So, you know, everybody came in there to talk about system of administration of justice or delay in court, process, court proceedings. Those were the conversations we had in those days. Nobody talked about what was going on on our side of the fence. And so Mr. George told me to his eternal credit and those who worked hard with him at that time led the, uh, began the push for the creation of a platform where commercial lawyers, can, commercial practitioners can also have their own issues canvassed. And that is what led to the establishment of the SBL yes. and, and ultimately the establishment of, of other sections. And, and in the last 15, 16 years, we have had the platform where we could we can uh, um, canvas our issues, deal with our issues. And then we've also been able to show the rest of the association how we think things should be run uh, in the association. Yes. So, uh, so I'm, I'm, I understand that I want the shoe, I know where it pinches. So um, bearing that in mind as our reality, we must be deliberate in our efforts to create our own Places and our own niches, right? So I know that there was a corporate council forum at the level of the MBA national, right? And indeed, I remember that uh, Rume, Rume, uh, Rume, Rume Rotimi of, uh, of MTN was at one time chair of that council. And also my dear brother, Matthew Ebadon, who was, uh, who was uh, until recently at uh, Nimasa. But somehow, I don't know how that body uh, uh, disappeared. But at our own level at the SBL, we created a corporate council committee. Now, my whole point is this. The point of creating those uh, 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 bodies is so that we can, the conversation can start. So that everybody understands that the GCs, in-house council, they are here to stay. They're not going anywhere. They belong to the profession. And they have their own issues, their own peculiar issues. So we create platforms so that at our conferences, they organize their own sessions so that their own topics are dealt with. It is yes. good, it's a process. It is a, it is a process of reorientation. Because I assure you, uh, there, are, there are senior lawyers in this profession today who have been quoted to, tell, to say to their younger colleagues, don't follow Olu Akpata. He's not a lawyer. Olu Akpata is a businessman. That is not law. Go and get your wig and gown, get your law report, and go to court. That is what is law. Now, mm. am I going to get upset when I hear stuff like that? No. It is a function of what the individual knows, function yes. of what he has experienced, and that is how we have operated. So it is incumbent on us, just as we did for SBL, it's incumbent on in-house counsel. To, to identify that this is a challenge uh, and then pursue courses of action that will lead to a change in mindset. So mm. case in point, Olu Akwata is running for president and you know that Olu Akwata is not going to superintend over an association that will not be taken into consideration or you know, create a pride of place for in-house counsel. So 
go and vote. Go and vote. Make sure that you get a candidate like that who is going to be at the helm of affairs and know that he will definitely, if he could create a corporate committee, a council committee at the level of SBL, of course he's going to make sure that a corporate council are heard in the association. They are part of the National Executive Committee, that their issues are front burner. That's a no-brainer, definitely. So I think um, rather than, I don't, I, the point of this, my long diatribe is that rather than complain, you know, let's recognize the challenge for what it is and, you know, uh, make smart decisions towards uh, changing the status quo. Beautiful, sir. Beautiful, sir. So um, I'll do a follow up to, to, to your comment, and um, which is still, which still boils uh, from the perceived um, unfair feeling uh, in the corporate council space. Um, so some council, for instance, feel that um, the efforts and achievements of some corporate councils are not recognized, nor are they seen as um, significant or landmark achievements. For instance, in the award of the um, rank of the senior advocates of Nigeria, um, the, Leg the Legal Practitioners Act provides uh, that uh, only legal practitioners who are in full legal practice are to be awarded this rank. And um, in some instances, um, academics are also given this, this rank. Corporate councils feel that the, this, uh, this forms some sort of um, unfair exclusion. So the question then is, um, if you are elected uh, the president of the NBA, would you be doing anything to redress this? Well, yeah, you're right. This, this, this question, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I lost it briefly, but I can hear you now. Okay, so um, you're right. Um, this question flows from the last one. I think uh, it will only be, it will flow naturally if the corporate council get better recognition, if corporate council are included uh, in, in the affairs, in the matters that, uh, in the affairs of the association, if they are giving a, a voice, if they are part of the National Executive Committee, all of these issues will be brought to the fore and they'll be dealt with appropriately. The mm -hmm. problem arises when you are not in the room. You, you, you understand, right? okay? When yes, you are not yes. in the room, you are, yes. when you are not in the room, we can't even start the conversation. The conversation. You understand? It is a, yes. you remember MK Abiola? You know, you can't shave my head in my absence. That's the, no. that's the, that's the scenario where, I'm. so right now, uh, corporate council, their heads are being shaved in the absence. So that, yes. is, the, that is the issue, really, uh, with regard to, uh, uh, um, with regard to- um, To corporate councils. Corporate council. So so from the point of, uh, oh, hey, we must be part of the system, that's one. Now we are talking about, we must be recognized, yes. right? And we yes, must, even, must even be, there should even be a system of, a, yeah. uh, of a honor. And um, recognizing our role in the this is yeah. what I'm hearing. In the, okay, so talking about the rank of senior advocate, right? Yes. yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so talking about the rank of senior advocate, as you yes. can imagine, many of many of us who are on the corporate and commercial side of things say, "Oh wow, so so uh, um, so there's no system." that recognizes our own efforts. So the same complaints from the house council, because you know, we are not entitled to be senior advocates, yes. right? Yes. Um, many have come to me, uh, many have come to me or, or those, those lawyers like me who are corporate uh, commercial attorneys, they say, well, you know, just wear your wig and gown, go back, it's easy, just do some cases and, uh, and apply. And I said, but I, I'm not a fraud. You know what I mean? I, yes. I don't feel right. Mm. Why should I now go back to court for six years just because I want to be called to get the rank? Exactly. You understand? I I must yeah. stay true to myself. Somebody else is practicing every day. He or she is deserving of that award. Why would I go and then just jump the queue and then just get some of my younger colleagues who are who are in the disputes group in my firm to sort me out and, and then 
go and then I go and apply. No, that's not me. I won't do it. So, so yes, if indeed the profession is so minded, then maybe you should create its own, another category of uh, of uh, of, uh, of uh, oh, privilege recognition. Yeah. recognition for those of us who are in a uh, uh, open and commercial okay. practice. So, so the same thing applies to in-house counsel. We must be in the room to push this argument. Indeed, one past president who I spoke to about this a long time ago said to me, make the case. You guys are the ones in the uh, corporate space. Make the case. What is the criteria that we will use? If we're, so, um, because senior advocate is senior advocate. Advocate, keyword yeah. advocate. So yes. let us now go to those who are corporate commercial practitioners. And this particular past president said to me, make the case, establish the criteria. How can corporate commercial practitioners be recognized and awarded their own um, silk, whatever it is called. And, and then, and I, and I heard him loud and clear. You know what I mean? And it was it is a function of us putting forth the argument. So, yes. you know, good uh, information for in-house counsel. Your struggles are very similar to our own struggles. Yes. Those of us who are corporate, corporate so it is yes. up to us to take advantage of uh, of. Um, of, the, oh. of you know, being in the room. Once we're in the room, we begin to put forward these arguments. Yes, oh, beautiful, beautiful, sir. And I, I share your sentiments. Um, I think, um, uh, the, and, and, and it's good that we have, um, <clears throat> we have the corporate councils listening to this, uh, except we get make ourselves available for this kind of conversations or we get ourselves available for um, these conversations at this forum where these issues are being discussed. Um, it, it's going to be the same thing and nothing is going to change. So it's important to make ourselves available for this. Um, we have a question from Ms. Abin Bolakeshin from Seedmark Technologies. She, she said that, um, you said in a, in a recent interview that the future the Nigerian lawyer is looking at is the present in other jurisdictions. This implies the chasm between the Nigerian lawyer and our foreign country. How do you intend to address this imbalance? It's a, it's a function of capacity, you know. Uh, and and I, I said that uh, uh, when we, you know, you know, the last conference of the NBA, of yes. which I co-chaired the technical conference, on conference planning, our mm -hmm. theme was facing the future. And I made that remark that you know, indeed, the future that we are, we are contemplating is the present. In in, in, in some yeah. other, I mean, yeah. hey. We are talking about virtual hearing today because COVID has forced us to recognize that we need to have virtual hearing. You and I know that virtual hearing is even the past for some jurisdictions. They've been doing this. They've been doing it. They've, been, they've even forgotten why they decided to do it. So we are playing catch up as usual, right? So I think how do we do that? Um, firstly, capacity is important so that we can have the skills to compete, right, with um, yes, uh, with those from other jurisdictions, and then. We, I think that is where the MBA has a role to play because there's a lot of catching up to do. You know, just get us into to that point where we can, because how can you compete when, with, with, when you are not even at varying levels? You know yes. what I mean? So we, there's a lot of catching up to do. You know, do. I can count on the fingers of one hand, you know, how many law, how many law faculties offer technology law, technology law as a, as a subject. And yes. we're in 2020. Think about it. Think about the lawyer uh, in 10 years' yes. time who doesn't yes. know technology law, technology law or who doesn't know technology. That that person will be a fossil. Yes. You know what I mean? That will be that person yes. will be a dinosaur. Yes. In the next mm. in the next couple of years. So so that catching up, and she is right. The, 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 the person who posed this question, there's a cousin, right? There is such a gulf between between us and some of our colleagues in the in other jurisdiction. And the first problem is us not even recognizing that it exists. I still hear senior lawyers telling me, uh, Nigerian lawyers are as good as any lawyer in any jurisdiction. There's no law that they know that we don't know. And I'm saying that is the beginning of the problem. There's a lot that they know that we don't know. And it's a function of where they operate, how they operate, you know, the level at which they are operating. So once we are humble enough to understand that you know we learn every day you know we need to acquire more skills you know what i mean we can hopefully begin to bridge that uh, gap and you know you don't need to reinvent the wheel 
there are there are tools readily available for us to make the quantum leap and bridge the gap. You know, and we don't we don't need to spend the amount of time that they spent to get to where they got to or they have gotten to. We are lucky that we can, if we recognize our deficiencies, we quickly move in and, and acquire the and address, acquire it. and address it. So for me, it's a major problem, and um, the MBA has a role to play. So I, I'm sure you begin to see and understand what I say when I say it's a deep wound. You know, there, yes. there's so many issues, so many issues, and um, um, the failure to recognize these issues, I think, is one of my is the major starting point. We don't even get it that this is this is this is what we ought to be doing, but we're not doing it, and this is the, a role for the association to be playing. That's why many people will ask you, what does the association do for me? Exactly, exactly, sir. Beautiful. Um, thank you. Many thanks for that uh, exposition. Um, so uh, the next question I have is that um, you, also recently you mentioned that if you were elected the president of the NBA, you would work to fight off all aspects of external intrusion into the lawyer's work. Um, and I know I have read your interview recently on the publication by Tiamon Bank wherein SMEs and other businesses were invited to subscribe for legal services. This is considered an encroachment. What's your take on this, sir? Um, well, you know, we've talked about poor remuneration for lawyers, right? Yes. And uh, we talked about that earlier. And I think I mentioned to you that we recognize that, uh, yes, there are some who just refuse to pay their lawyers well, but there are those who cannot because the earning capacity of our lawyers is dwindling by the day, right? There is not enough for the lawyers to do. Firstly, as I've alluded to previously, Ayokule, is as a result of the way we train our lawyers anyways. So yes. we bring lawyers, we train them in one, in one direction. We, we have 7,000 lawyers coming out of law school every year. Then we start complaining that there are too many lawyers in Nigeria. They cannot, they, there are not too many lawyers in Nigeria. There are just too many lawyers doing the same thing. So yeah. that is the genesis of the problem. But yes. let me take my eyes away from that, you know, that uh, the genesis. Let's look at the issue you have just raised now. Yes. But please hold the thought. Don't forget about the genesis of the problem because it okay. will always be a yeah. Now, the issue you have raised now is that since there's precious little for us to do yes. because of the way we have trained ourselves, then it behoves on the MBA our protector, our mother association, to be eternally vigilant in ensuring that the little that we have to do, our little lunch is not taken from us. So um, we will need to we will need to counter or block any so any incursion into our space because there is not enough even to go around. So um, um, you find that agents nowadays do. Uh, conveyancing agreements, you know, because they've done it so often, they work with the lawyer mm -hmm. so often, they just simply say cut and paste. I mean, just change the address, change the location, change dimension, and let's move on. Then they will just go talk to some impoverished lawyer who is and just buy his stamp and seal from him and give him yeah. a pitter and keep on applying the stamp and seal to the agreement that they've been, they've been preparing. Been, right? Exactly. Yes. So then, then that is at one level. Then at another, at another level, KPMG, PwC, Deloitte, or Ernst & Young wake up one morning and say, hey, you know what? We can do this law work. And you know, we can. Okay, uh, lost yeah. the brief. So are we back? Yes, we are back, sir. So big, big four accounting firms can, you know, just express the the uh, intention to practice law as part of their service offering. So I mean, I'm not going to fight that, but I'm going to ask: What is the MBA doing about it? Are we part of the conversation? Is MBA? Are we even involved? What are the terms of? This kind of engagement is it? Is it the time now to allow for such an incursion into our space? You know what I mean. So, I I think it's important that we play a protectionist role 
and, and ensure that our, our colleagues, our members, you know, are not, uh, they don't lose out. They don't end up with the short end of the stick. We have, we have signed up to Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. So yes. we, have, we have two issues. Now, lawyers from the continent can come in. Now, the NBA has to be vigilant because the idea is that it is lawyers from the continent that should come in. Mm. Now, you yes. and I know that many of our sister countries on the continent have very close relations with countries outside of the continent. Yes. Now, we have to check because part of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, part of the principles underpinning that agreement is that origination of the service is important, where it comes from. So yes, a lawyer from Djibouti can come to Nigeria based on that treaty, but a Chinese lawyer who has now moved to Djibouti should not be coming into Nigeria. I'm, 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 just, giving, I'm just giving you an example, but you get the point, right? So MBA, MBA has to be vigilant in this regard, you know? So so we, we need to protect our turf, particularly that because there's so little that we can do at the moment because of the way we are training our lawyers. So let's go back to how we train our lawyers. So okay. let's, how we train our lawyers, and then let's talk about Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. And just yes. in, in, now, it's a two-way street. Ordinarily, we should be the major beneficiaries of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, just by virtue of our numbers. Yes. Right? Just by virtue yes. of our numbers. Now, just looking at only legal profession alone, can we actually take benefit of that, that uh, treaty? Do we, have we trained our lawyers in the way that they can offer services to the rest of the continent? I don't think so. So you would have thought that we would take advantage that two-way street. But even in recent times, uh, um, um, you know, what kind of service? What kind of, because the continent is not expecting Nigerian lawyers to come there and talk about the land law uh, land law uh, litigation. No, we are expecting Nigerian lawyers. We are expecting Nigerian lawyers to come there to help them with transactions. Right? They are expecting them. Oh, we have done privatization in Nigeria, as you know. We have had about two rounds. Uh, are you there? Yes, I'm here. So we have done privatization in Nigeria. We've had about two or three rounds. Are our lawyers in Nigeria able to go and advise them in Ghana about their own privatization program? Do we have the skills? Yes, sir. That is what the Africa country we ought to derive from this kind of treaty. But I dare say that just because of the way we train our lawyers, we will not be able to take advantage, at least not now, of that agreement or that treaty. You and I know our banks. Many of them have become champions, dominant players on the continent. Our uh, big banks here. Yes. How many of them took their lawyers along? How many of the lawyers, how many of our lawyers went along with the banks? So. And I can assure you, those banks went into some jurisdictions where they couldn't find lawyers. So they are talking to Paris and London to advise them on how to operate in those uh, jurisdictions because. Uh, Nigerian lawyers will have not stepped up to the plate. So, so I, I think it's important that we pay more attention to this. To, to this. Beautiful, sir. Um, good, good, good point there. Um, I want to tilt it a little bit to, um, the, to look at the macro issues um, affecting the NBA. Um, you, uh, you said recently that um, uh, the NBA had lost its voice as a prime defender of the bar and the bench. I believe you speak the mind of other lawyers, especially in the way and manner the previous um, Chief Justice of Nigeria was ousted from office. How do you intend to achieve this um, if elected as NBA president? Sir? Well, um, you know, I've been, uh, that statement has been given all sorts of colorations, uh, but I, I stand by it. I, and, 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 I, and I've had to mention that uh, um, MB has lost his voice, is not me casting aspersions on current leadership. But I'm referring to, and in making that statement, I was referring to, you know, um, something that has happened over time, you know? And I yes. asked, at, the, at the recent interview, I asked, I said, why is it that every time we talk about past NBA presidents, the name that keeps popping up is Alao Akabashon, right? Who was our president 
you know, decades ago. Yeah, yes. So at that interview, I said, you know, succeeding leaders, not, I'm not picking out anyone in particular. Let me even say the succeeding generation, right? Have yes. not actually lived up to the role that the society have become, has become accustomed to seeing the MBA play, you know? And so, so has lost his voice. Yes, uh, we have been gagged or we have gagged ourselves. You know, we, we are yes. not speaking up as, uh, as um, stridently we're not speaking up as um, um, as a, we're not as vocal as we should be in certain matters that affect larger society. Indeed, yes. in matters that affect our own our own uh, space, the justice yes. sector space. So, so I always I give the example, yes, of the approval of the chief justice. of Nigeria, but there are many other Ayokunle, are you, are you there? Uh, I lost you there. <laughs> okay, I think you're yeah, back. Okay, I'm, yeah. I, I, you found me now. Yes, I found you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so um, I was just saying that over time, the MBA has, uh, has kind of fallen short. On yeah. some of these expectations. So I think if, if I were to become president, that the first thing I'm going to do is, I've told you, is try to get our members to fall in love with the association again. Because yeah. one of the reasons why the MBA has lost its voice is yes. that the MBA, even the mem members don't believe in the association anymore. Yes. So, so when we go out and speak, it's, yes. it sounds very hollow. Yes. You understand what I mean? It sounds yes, hollow. Yes, I understand perfectly. Yes. Even, even your own members don't even believe you. What are you talking mm -hmm. about, right? Exactly. You, you, yes. you, you, you are coming out to intervene in, in, in larger society. Look at your association. You are yes. coming out to talk about how Nigerians are being poorly treated. Lawyers are being poorly treated in the Yes. <laughs> MBA. So yes. it doesn't lie in that space. So firstly, we will need to get our own people to buy yes. in. So in that you idea. know that you have people behind you Yes. When we go out to make those kind of interventions, yes. take our elections as a case in point. 2018, yes. our elections were, you know, I mean, you know, our elections were almost a near disaster in 2018, mm. right? Yes. You know, we, we got to a point where we were not so sure we would hold elections in 2018. And yes. might I add that 2020 is looking dodgy at the moment because we are not all, everybody's wondering what is going on, right? Because there's yeah. no information, nobody knows what's going on. So then the NBA, when Nigeria now wants to hold elections, maybe a do state elections in 20, later this year, you yeah. hear the NBA set up observer team, Teams. observer yeah. mission to go and yes. observe elections in a do state. Who's uh, going to take us seriously? True, nobody. Nobody will. Because you, you are observing elections. Nemo that quote on her bet. Yes. It's a basic principle yes. of our profession. Yes. So, so, so um, um, I think to get your voice back, you need to yes. get, you have to show that you are deserving of that kind of recognition. You are deserving yes. of, of the, the respect of society. And you lead by example. You show that in your own affairs, you, 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 are, you are up to scratch. Up to scratch. And, and then when you do that, then of course, courage of conviction, you know, speak truth to power. You know, the president, the president of the country comes to your conference and tells you that the rule of law should take the back seat as far as national interest is concerned. And you let him walk out of the room without telling him that you disagree. You know, yeah. things like that, you know, it just, that's why people will say, and I agree with them that um, we kind of we lost our voice. And so if I were there, if I were to be president, yes. Uh, definitely, we would, um, we, would, we, would, we would take care of our business and then we would speak truth to power. Yes. You know, we'll say it as it is. Yes. Hmm, beautiful. I, 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 I've, I've learned a lot from what you've said. And um, 
I think it, I think I speak for other lawyers also to say that um, in recent times, I mean, when the issue of the um, our style of the last CJN was coming up, we even had some lawyers. Um, we didn't have a united front, and so some lawyers were even justifying um, what was going on at the time. So I think it's just perfect what you have said, and hopefully by the time you, if you are elected the president of the NBA, you'll be able to actualize this and redress the image the NBA currently has. My next question is not far from that, and that has to do with the um, with legal education. Um, so our question is, what is your plan for proper regulation of legal education in Nigeria? Um, the author of the question is, is saying that he understands that the responsibility is vested in the Council of Legal Education, but he feels that the NBA has a critical role to play. Uh, he feels that the quality of our outputs leaves much to be desired, and he feels um, that there are too many lawyers scrambling to service a $400 billion economy. I know you've spoken briefly about this, about the fact that it's not that we don't have enough, we, it's not that we have too many lawyers, but lawyers doing the same thing. But he still wants to know what the plans of the MBA will be under your leadership for to assist with the proper regulation of legal education. Okay, so I think, so that we don't waste time, I think in the course of this uh, conversation, I think we've talked about you yes. know what the problem and he's this the individual who has the question is very correct our colleague is very correct um yes. it, it really is not about it's not mba's role it is the council of legal education yes. but the mba has a mandate given to it by its constitution to intervene in that space and mba is fortunate that the chairman of the council of legal education is a yes. past president of the association no no, no right now he's not the past president chairman is a senior advocate right yes the, yes. the, the, the director general of law school is another senior advocate uh, most of the people who make those decisions are lawyers. So okay. I don't think we'll have any difficulty if we set our minds to doing what we need to do. I don't think we'll have any difficulty in asking everybody to sit around the table to say, listen, we are not training lawyers for the future. We're not training lawyers for, for the, to take the roles that we expect them to tra take. We are, not, we are not training lawyers to whom we can bequeath this profession as we bow out of the stage. So yes. I don't think it will be too difficult to get that conversation going, but we must have a plan. What kind of training are we talking about? Um, what do we do? Um, I have said, oh, Nigeria came up, the government of Nigeria announced recently, we are diversifying into agriculture and solid minerals. We don't want to be a monoproduct economy. Don't ask me if anything has happened since that announcement was made. We can talk yeah. about that later. Cool. But they came up with that policy. Now, has the uh, the, those who are in charge of legal education, have they sat down to say, if the economy is going in this direction, we will need lawyers, yeah. right? Definitely. Will, is anybody talking about how to train lawyers to even understand the agriculture in the agricultural industry? Solid minerals, that has been the mainstay of the South African economy for many years, yes. right? Have we yes. got to say, okay, are we talking to the South Africans to say, well, can we train our lawyers in South Africa? Or can you send us lawyers, uh, sorry, uh, professors and teachers to come for sabbatical, let us pick one university, University of Abuja or National University, whatever, that in lawyers and solid minerals. So that we yeah. know that, that there will not be a shortage yes. of lawyers who will service that sector. You see, like I yeah. keep on saying, and this is, the, this is what we have been shouting from the rooftops at the section of business law. We service an economy. Lawyers are needed in every sector. Lawyers must be deliberately trained to service each of these sectors. So, yeah. so, so we need to do more in terms of, and the MBA has a role to play, even if it's not for nothing else, just to open the eyes process, just to let them understand that you have to be deliberate about these things. This economy is going in this direction. Lawyers must follow in that direction. Entertainment yeah. law before your eyes and my eyes, it has exploded in front of yes. us. Yes. Where are we in the lawyers to other, but because what they don't understand is that the implication of that is that we would have to export those services. Yes. You know, we would have to outsource, get lawyers from elsewhere to do it. And that's loss of income. Yes. Hmm. Go and check the numbers. The legal services sector in the UK contribute to the GDP of the United Kingdom. You will be amazed. 
that country, as a matter of deliberate policy, encourages that sector because it employs people, it brings, it contributes to the GDP because there's so much that goes on in the sector. So, um, we, as the MBA, we will need to play our part. We need to work harder uh, and and uh, and uh, make a deliberate attempt to grow to train lawyers that will service the economy. However, mm. I'm not quite sure. I agree that we have too many lawyers in a 40 billion or whatever. Uh, what's the number economy? 400, 400 billion. 400 billion. Uh, yes. uh, firstly, firstly, we need to go and check if it's 400 billion. I think it's it's, it's a larger it's larger than that. Okay. Um, but having said that, I don't think we have too many lawyers. Indeed, we don't have enough. I've been practicing for 28 years. I've been running my firm for 25 years. We don't have enough lawyers. And when we say we don't have enough, because we're not training them right. We have quantity, but I'm not so sure about the quality, quality. because we are not training them to serve, service the various aspects of the economy. And I dare say that if we're training them right, we would find out that there is a vacancy. There will still be vacancies because the economy is expanding. The economy is growing. Mm, true. So, so that's, that's, that's my position. I think we should mm. definitely we'll play, we'll play a, a major role. We should be playing a major role. And under my watch, we will. Yes. Mm, beautiful, sir. Beautiful. Nice to see, see, um, see from that perspective, actually, in terms of training and all of that. Um, so the next question we have here is that um, it's been noted that senior corporate councils hardly encourage or allow juniors to attend or get involved in, in MBA activities. How, if you are elected MBA president, how would you get them to integrate their juniors into the activities of the MBA? Well, um, senior corporate council as an in-house? Yes, in-house council, yes. Well, actually, in my own experience from the SBL uh, as chairman, we have, we have, uh, we, were, we have been able to, you know, build a relationship with in-house counsel in such a manner that I wouldn't say that that is my experience. There is that um, the corporates, uh, our colleagues in-house, actively participate in the activities of the section of business law. We have, we have worked together. Uh, for all these 15, 16 years. The only thing that was lacking was the in-house counsel where felt that we only came when we wanted help. We, 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 we are not, in, and that's, in a few, that's maybe four or five years ago, they, yes. they, 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 said, they, they, they mentioned to us, and this was the feedback, and we received it in, 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 uh, in good faith, that we were not taking deliberate steps to create a space where they could also articulate and deal with their issues, which led to the setting up of the corporate council uh, uh, committee. And but I haven't said that, before we set up the corporate council committee, for at least three years before that time, we always had a, G, a dinner with our GCs at the level of the field. We wanted to have that platform where with the general council, in-house council, we had a platform where we could meet and you know continue to uh, uh, share ideas. Yes. And in terms of how we wanted our, our section and indeed our profession in what direction we wanted it to go. So that has not been my experience with the uh, SBL. And I dare say that um, it was it was a, because of deliberate effort, okay. inclusiveness, letting them, I mean, we've always on the council of SBL, at least for as long as I can remember, uh, I would have to think, at least I, have been, I was secretary in 2012. Um, at least let me go back to 2012 till this. There has always been a, 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 a GC or an in-house council on, on the SBL council. Uh, mm. You understand? So that at yes. that level of making of a section of business law, we have in-house council working closely on the committee so that everybody knows that, that uh, 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 they're part of the whole the process. So indeed, if I were to be president of the bar, it is that same attitude I would, I would, I would bring to, uh, to bring to bear on mm -hmm. my activities as president. The same attitude we will, and once you once include once you include all the stakeholders, uh, um, um, you will find that not only will the general counsel take an interest, they will encourage 
uh, those their colleagues who are on their staff to be part of the process. They would, I mean, SBL, the, the uh, MTN, for example, we have loads of, of our colleagues from MTN, from uh, British American Tobacco, and so on and so forth, attending not just the general council themselves, but their colleagues attending our conferences, SBL conference. That is not my experience at all. So at the level of MBA, once the general council feel that indeed in-house council are part of this process, of course they're going to make sure that their colleagues uh, uh, take benefits and attend and participate. So that would be my approach. Hmm. Okay, uh, beautiful exposition there. Um, but just to also clarify, the, um, the general feeling in some quarters is um, without prejudice to what is being done by, at the, um, by the SBL, um, there is this feeling that there are still a lot more um, corporate councils and general councils out there um, that belong to some associations but don't belong to the SBL. For instance, I'm aware that there is um, a committee of company secretaries and legal advisor for banks. There is also a similar committee for manufacturing and some other industries are, are like that. Uh, it's not a significant percentage that participate at the SBL. And so there, there is this feeling that the SBL could do more and in, in a wider context, the NBA to probably reach out to these associations to get them to become inclusive. So I, I don't know if you want to still say something about that, sir. Well, that is good feedback. Uh, and, um, but, you know, I, again, I want to say that, um, I mean, you know, the, the, the biggest room in the world, you know, they say is the one for improvement, right? So, yes, sir. But, but, you know, just to let you understand that I even, I, at, at the level of SBL, the yes. company secretary who, the, and GCs who are the manufacturing sector, I, have, I engaged with them when Mr. Godwin Samuel of USC, he was yes. he was very, very involved and he was part of uh, person of the SBL. I have addressed that. Uh, I'm back. Are you back? Yes, I'm back. Yes. Okay, excellent. So I, you know, it was because of that level of engagement that I even got to understand that, hey, when you're talking corporate counsel or in-house counsel, know that they are organized sector by sector. Yes. So at SBL level, I went around to address each of the groups. So those in manufacturing, those in banking, and so on and so forth. So we we, we decided that we had to go. So we had loads in banking uh, until she left Sterling Bank, Justina Lewa, who was a, yes. uh, it was part and of the SBL. In manufacturing, in Uwaboy, Agwebaku of uh, Heineken Nigeria Breweries, part and parcel of the SBL, George Uweche of uh, GS, GSK. Yeah, uh, uh, Godwin Samuel, like I said before, he left the UAC. Uh, Bidemi. Uh, uh, Bidemi, so you're actually on this call. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Bidemi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sholado Sumu of BAT. Uh, yes. I can go on and on and on, but you yes. are right. There are still many outside the fold. Yes, you know, and and you know, um, um, you know, it is a function of we have to do better in terms of show what we have to deliver in terms of output, so that we can get more people interested. Michael Osilama O2 of Zenith Bank, and uh, you know, Zenith Bank, Access Bank, those are they have supported the SBL at least for the last fourteen. Well, 14 years, you know. So I'm for council, in-house council, and um, but we, we 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 can and we will do better. I'm confident that the present current SAN has kept you going. You know, the SBL is organizing. I think what will be the first virtual conference of the NBA. Yes. Next week. <laughs> you know, and so I, I continue to be extremely proud of this of this section. You know, I come, I come to be extremely proud. And and I know that um, corporate council continue to, to support uh, the section. And But I take the hint, I would definitely be relaying the feedback that the, the harvest is many, or the yeah. harvest is plenty. <laughs> yes, so the we are... go out, So we should go out and do more. <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right, beautiful. Thank you so much for that. Um, so my next question 
is from Nonsuazi, who is head of legal for ALP MT Apapa Limited. He said there is this whole wholesome presumption that in-house lawyers are not practicing lawyers. Uh, he, so he's asking what can be done to change, the, change this negativist connotation, given that the law, given that law practice goes beyond law firm activities. It feels that a lot of corporate counsel have had extensive law firm practice and continue to add positively to building the jurisprudence of law in line with international standards. So he's asking what can be done to correct this um, notion. Well, it's a reorientation, as we have said. We've mentioned this in the course of this conversation, uh, making sure that um, there are voices out there speaking up for in-house counsel, that they are not only are they voices, that we give them the uh, uh, we give them the megaphone as MBA. We give them the the megaphone, and uh, with the volume raised to the uh, to the to appropriate decibels, so that uh, uh, everybody can know loud and clear or hear loud and clear that in being in house counsel does not make you any less a lawyer, and and and, and that has to be the tone from the top of our association. Yeah. You know that is how people can. So you don't want people if the leaders of the association are selling that uh, narrative or, 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 or sending out that narrative. Of course, of course, that's where the challenge comes from. But where there is a change in narrative and people begin to recognize that uh, corporate counsel are lawyers, uh, uh, properly so-called, uh, mm -hmm. over time, that narrative will change. You know, or not only, sorry, over time, it will become accepted by, by, uh, by larger society, you know, and then, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, so it's, it's a mindset thing, and um, I'm committed to changing that because, like I said, I have suffered from that kind of prejudice and stereotyping mm. in the past. Yeah. So I definitely would not like girls to go through that. Oh, beautiful, sir! Beautiful, sir! So um, I have um, a comment and um, a question together at the same time from uh, Mrs. Bidemi Ademola, General Counsel for Nigeria and West Africa for Unilever PLC. Um, she has confirmed what you have just said. She said that um, the section of business law has continued to reach out to corporate counsel through the corporate counsel committee, and she's encouraging other general counsel to join in. And, and I believe as I read this, other general counsel can read that and also to take the advice. So she's now asking that, what are you going to do about harmonizing the green and pink NBA stamps? And why is there, a re what is the reason for the difference in the stamps? Okay, that, uh, thank you, Bidemi. Uh, you know, that question, <laughs> you know, that one is the banana peel question, be very careful. <laughs> but, uh, you know, let's, 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 let's not, let's cut, let's, let's cut to the chase. Let yeah. me, I will not, I will not try and butter it. Now, those I was I was uh, I worked closely with the administration that introduced this or well not introduced reintroduced the stamp and seal because they've yes. always existed in our rules. Yes. Now the the rationale for for making that differentiation was because of the fact that um, to the best of my understanding was that um, um, the those who are in private legal practice are the ones who can actually, uh, who are actually practicing. So their own stamp is the stamp of the practitioner who will practice and for affixing that stamp will earn an income. Okay. You're in the court of, so, uh, and uh, um, for those who are in-house, their stamp is not for the purposes of earning an income, if you know what I mean. Yes. Um, so, but let me go back to the, the rationale being that, and this is a is an ongoing argument, is a very touchy subject. Um, the lawyers who are in house, not just private in private sector, but even those in government, right, always say that um, they should be given the same color, the same seal, so that they have the ability to earn an income outside what they earn in uh, in their places of employment. Uh, it would appear that the rest of the association don't quite agree with that. It does. And, yes. um, and, um, and the, and the, and, and so it comes down to narrow and couple issues, right? Yes. And um, yes. so those who are 
those who are in private practice say, well, how can you be getting two bites at the cherry? How can you be double dipping? We, this is where we earn our living. You get your salary. So that kind of conversation or that argument back and forth, yes. right? This is me yes. just, me, this is me trying to explain this in the most simplistic of terms as possible so that yes. we can this, right? So yes. I think that um, what we need to do, again, back to the having a seat at the table argument. Um, yes. This was the argument in 2014 when the thing was introduced or implemented, when that yes. uh, the stamp was implemented and the distinction was created. Yes. 2020, is that still the reality? 2020, is that still the, is that still the view of the majority? 2020, uh, do the arguments still hold water? It's all about, it's all about debate. It's all about a contestation of ideas and opinions. And, you know, superior arguments will always hold sway. That is my yes. attitude. So yes. I say that it's something that we, we should bring back to the table. You know, if it is such a big deal or big issue for the in-house counsel or lawyers yes. in government, bring it back to the table. Let's re, let's open or reopen the, the conversation and say, first and foremost, thank goodness, those who implemented this policy, they are still alive. Yes. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, why why this distinction? Can you reestablish or re, uh, just reestablish for us the rationale? And then we can now say, okay, let's talk about it. And, it, it, and if... If, if, if it is clear that there are gaps or the, the policy is not making sense any longer, get the, the association, you set up a committee, let everybody, uh, uh, let the committee decide and make recommendations. All, all I can say is that I will always be fair, yeah. right? I will firstly provide the opportunity for the conversation to be had. Mm. If I were president, yes, I will provide the opportunity for the conversation to be had. If I'm president, okay, right, and yes, then, sir. then we, 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 I mean, we'll, we'll leave it for the for the association to 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 determine. You, you know what I mean? Yes, uh, uh, I see the comment on the screen. Uh, maybe it says it's a big deal and uh, and uh, <laughs> and it's all about inclusiveness. Yeah, I agree. You know what I mean? I agree to yes. the extent that it should be discussed. Yes. It should be discussed. Because yes. the concession I will make, the concession I will make to the in-house counsel and those in government services that they probably were not in the room when that decision was taken at that time. Mm -hmm. Right? And yes. maybe their views were not sought. So that concession I will make. I'm not so sure, but that is my thinking. Maybe they were not in the room. Maybe they would have had the opportunity to put forth their own arguments uh, uh, to the contrary. So, so definitely we should have uh, 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 we should reopen that conversation because I've heard it mentioned many times. It's obviously a sore point for some, you know. Uh -huh. yes, so Bidemi has just said that we, they were not in the room when <laughs> when that was <laughs> yeah, not in room at all. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So. so, so be a point taken, and um, and uh, you have my, you have my. I mean, you know where to find me. Uh, you have my assurance that uh, uh, um, definitely that conversation will be reopened, and we will, as a body, we will discuss it. And we'll, I'm not going to by fiat simply say, "Oh no, give everybody uh, pink or give everybody green." No, it doesn't lie. I don't have that kind of power. Yeah. Now I don't have it. Even if I become president, I, I still won't have it. But um, I, am, I am sympathetic enough, or no, sorry, not empathetic enough to understand that it is something that we should be discussing. Mm. Beautiful, sir. Beautiful. Um, I'm, we're running out of time, so I still have a few questions here, which I'll just quickly run through. Um, so there's a question here that there's been a gradual erosion of the rule of law in our polity, and this is of great concern. Um, so the question is, what would you do as President, if elected, in strengthening the rule of law, the independence of the judiciary, and the constant overreach of the executive powers by the MDAs and others on government? Well, um, I think I think the starting point will be, firstly, like I said, we will firstly, as MBA, fix our own uh, 
our own issues so that we have capacity to intervene in these areas and deal with these issues. Because like I said, with all of our best intentions, if we are not equipped or resourced to intervene in this area, we will just be flailing in the wind. We will, uh, we will, I mean, our hands will be flailing our hands in the wind uh, and we will um, not be effective or effectual, yes. right? So, but, but then, but then um, rule of law or respect for rule of law, I think the first thing I will focus on is the system of administration of justice, okay. right? And yes. the role that it, it can do, because you find out that where the judiciary is functioning suboptimally, then yes. you, from the get-go, rule of law issues uh, are, are taking the back seat because yes. the judiciary will need to function optimally so that rule of law, because essentially it is at the level of the judiciary that will determine whether or not rule of law is flourishing in this jurisdiction or not. But if the judiciary is not functioning properly, that's a problem. Then, with regard to uh, the attitude of the executive, mm. again, to be a function of the MBA, having the courage of conviction, his leadership, being able to speak truth to power, and insisting, because, you know, that it, the rule of law or upholding the rule of law goes to the heart yes. of, of, of who we are, what we are as an association. So for me, it is our, it is, it is almost a divine mandate to uphold or to defend the rule of law. So for me, it, is, it will now be a function of who that leader is. How is that leader able to galvanize the association? You know, with laser focus, we can yeah. say, hey, we will not allow for any erosion of the rule of law while this association is still standing. Yeah. Yes. And then we will, as watchdogs of society, we will hold the feet of our leaders to the fire to ensure that they do what they ought to do. And then, of course, the next question is, if they don't, what will you now do? If they don't, we will now take action as a pressure group they are firstly it's important i uh, believe that it, it must be clear to everybody where we stand so the first thing we need to do is to stand in opposition to any such action and clearly articulate our, our position that by itself is an elixir that by itself will boost the populace and the society they will firstly know that yes the lawyers have spoken so we will, there cannot be ambivalence or equivocation. Firstly, in condemning, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, excoriating any of those people, of those in government who do things uh, that are contrary to what the rule of law stands for, right? Yes, then yes, to the extent that we are able to, we will now take civil action as a body and yes. apply as much force as we can muster. You know, I keep on saying about the removal of justice on Nogia. Yes. My Lord, the Chief Justice of Nigeria. Yes. I say that my own quarrel is not so much that we were not able to reinstate him because I, I, I probably, you and I will probably agree that we lack the power to reinstate him. Yes. But my quarrel is that I don't think we were forceful enough. I don't think we were, I don't think we were, you know, convincing enough in our in our condemnation, yes, and our and our, in our opposition yes. to that uh, the egregious Opposition. egregious conduct of government in yes. that regard, you yes. know that that's an acceptable crossing of lines. Yes, you have an acceptable uh, negation of the principle of separation of powers. I don't yes. think an association. We, I don't think. I mean, you know. It's a, what was it one year after the fact? You know, if you if you do a post mortem, if you go around and ask the people, you know, the reasonable man's test, you know, yes. just go and ask, what did you, how did you see the role of the MBA in the inaugural removal? You know, I, I think you know what the feedback was. Yes, the, the feedback, the feedback was in good, and we we actually even had we had some lawyers also supporting the um, the other. I mean, the you know. Yeah. No lessness at the time. No, no, no. That would always happen. You know what I mean? Because of diversity yes. of opinion. 
you yes. know, there are those who lent their names to what I call that uh, that uh, perfidy. And I kept yes. on telling them, some of them senior advocates, I kept on telling them, listen, I know you, you are a good guy. I know you, you mean well, but what you have done is that you have lent your name to this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, what is anathema. And at the end of the day, others who may not have uh, agreed with the action, just by seeing your name, yeah. you know? So, so, yes. so that's why I think that um, I think we, we, cannot, we cannot prevaricate on issues like this. Uh, we will have to have uh, the ability to galvanize because, because we will always have differing opinions. But I think our, uh, those who run our association must find a way to certain issues that we cannot subject to or cannot look at through narrow prisons. Yes. You know what I mean? There yeah. are issues that we must elevate beyond, beyond subjectivity or beyond yeah. the... Agreed. Primordial considerations. Yeah, the, the independence of the judiciary, it's, it's, it's non-negotiable. Whether you are Hausa, whether you are Yoruba, you are Igbo, whether you are Christian or you are Muslim, you know, whether, whether, whether the president is your friend or yes. you are his lawyer. Yes. You know, you don't, the, the removal of the, the chief justice of Nigeria or the independence of the judiciary is non-negotiable. What government did in removing or not get that, that is, I mean, we will ne never leave down that day as a legal, as a, as a, as a legal profession or yeah. as a country. I don't think it will continue to haunt us. You yes. know, was, was, yeah. was the pre that president that was established, you know, yes. it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be something we will, we will continue to rule. Yes. Okay. As, a, as a nation. Yes. Thank you. All right. Sir. Okay. I, so I, I, hope you, I hope you heard. Uh, yes, I, I heard, but I, I think I lost some parts of your conversation, but I heard the major part of it. Um, about the fact that it's it's that their episode will be one of one of the incidents will who rule to get us as a nation. Okay. So I have a question yes. from yes. an anonymous, somebody that is not anonymous, but chooses to be anonymous. And she says that um, the NBA is all <laughs> inclusive, <laughs> but, she, but we need to stratify legal work and encourage lawyers not to see law school as the ultimate, but other aspects of legal work as work opportunities. She feels that law school should be for those who want to be litigators, if you want to do solicitor's work, you need not go to the law school. What is your view on this, sir? I don't know if you, I don't know if you're able to get that. <laughs> I don't know if you're able she to. She feels get that. that law school need not. She, yes, so she feels that law school should be for litigators, for litig people who intend to do litigation. But um, that uh, if you want to practice solicitor's work, law school should not be made compulsory. What are your views on this, sir? Well, that is um, um, that is uh, some. I, I like to think of myself as a disruptor, so it is something. It's an idea I'm willing to. Is an idea. They are willing to uh, uh, consider. Okay. So, um, um, you know, can we just say I w it's something I'm willing to consider? You know, I never say never. Uh, I never say never, but um, I'm still trying to wrap my head around that the proposal. <laughs> so we where we can have law where we can have lawyers who do not go to law school because really. If law school were the kind of law school I would like to see, right? Law yes. school will be offering 
uh, will have something to offer not only to the litigator but also yes. to the individual who is not intending to be a litigator. Yes, that is the kind of law school I would like to see. So yes. I'm not so sure I agree with uh, uh, Miss Anonymous uh, <laughs> or Mrs. Anonymous that uh, the solution will be a, a total, a complete circumvention. Or, or a bypassing of the law school because you don't want to be a litigator. Law school should not only be about litigation. You know, uh, uh, there's there's a lot more that uh, should be offered at the law school. Okay, sir. Okay, I, I think basically maybe to uh, to Trump, I think what she probably intends to say and to is that um, with your law degree, you should there should be some sort of work you should be able to do without necessarily having to go um, to the law school. So she's probably making a case for, to say that um, with your law degree, you should be able to practice as a solicitor. And um, so that, I think that's what she was basically trying to think. think but you know, but I, you, know, you know, the profession in Nigeria is fused. Yes. Right? So, so the problem yes. stems from that, that, um, that uh, basic structure. Or which is yeah. that uh, uh, the profession is fused because yeah. um, with your law degree you will still need some kind of training to be a practicing solicitor. So okay. I, I'm sure at some point we will, be, we will contemplate the uh, uh, the separation, as it were, of, okay. uh, of, uh, of both sides of the profession, and so that, like in England, as a solicitor you will go through your solicitor's training and then become uh, a solicitor and you are not a barrister and you don't have uh, you don't go to court but um, uh, so for me that is the problem is the fact that it is fused but yes. to say that um, from 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 uh, right from under, after undergrad as you graduate mm -hmm. uh, you can just go and become a lawyer without more uh, let's 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 think about it a bit more and uh, because i don't i don't throw out any ideas uh, okay. He probably okay. has met, so, okay. but, uh, but in, in my own response for now would be that law school is necessary because the profession is fused. If we yes. separate, the, only the, it's possible that only the barristers will go to law school going forward, but the solicitors will still need to get some kind of training. Yes, all right. Thank you so much, sir. So as we round off, I'll just, I just have two quick questions to ask you. First is to say that um, for the indecisive lawyer, who is listening to you now? Um, what will what will you be telling the indecisive lawyer why he should vote for you as the president of the NBA? What do you consider the qualities you possess which will make you a perfect fit for the office of the NBA president? Thank you. Um, firstly, um, I think um, one compelling um, factor of my candidacy is, the, is that I, I have. What, what I consider to be recent relevant experience. And I don't think any uh, of the other gentlemen who are, who are running for the office can make the same boast. Um, because in the last 10 years plus, I have been actively involved uh, at all levels of the association. And that degree of familiarity or that level of familiarity is, is critical and it's necessary. Uh, um, you don't need uh, one who, who would only tell you uh, uh, who, who, has, who would, would come to the job to learn, you know, you must hit the ground running because it is only, it's a, it's only for 24 months, the presidency. So we yes. don't have that to ask for anybody to come there and uh, firstly understand. And I've tried to, as I, as I have tried to describe to you, the challenges are enormous. You know, the, the, the work scope is quite broad. So, uh, so th that familiarity, understanding, and like I said, I've worked closely with the last three presidents actively at the MBA. You know, I'm not talking about the fact that you're a practitioner in your firm and you have a few ideas on how you think the MBA should run. I'm talking about I have been there, done that, and, and, and I know what the issues are currently. And that much we need, you know. And, 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 and then I want to emphasize on the word currently, because current challenges definitely differ from challenges of 20 years ago. Right, so again, I am the candidate who can come to the table with that kind of experience. Secondly, I am I'm, I have a, I have a track record of that. My antecedents are clear, right? Uh, I have run a law firm. I have I continue to run a law firm with my partners. We built the law firm 
We started with four, 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 four lawyers. Today, we're well over 100 lawyers. We have, the law firm has grown, right, in the last 25 years to a major player in all sectors of legal practice, right? So it shows that at least I know something about managing men and resources, right? Mm -hmm. Critical, which is critical, you know? And again, I think uh, uh, of the three candidates, I think I'm the one who can say hand to heart without fear of contradiction, but I have more experience in this regard, right? So thirdly, I come to, the, I come to this race with passion, which is a personal attribute and which I'm sure even from our conversation today, you have detected, right? Yes. So yes. I come to the race with passion and I, I am an individual, I like to improve any space I occupy. Essentially, I, occupy, I like to be the change I want to see. I am yes. not an abject critic. You, yes. you know what I mean? So yes. just go in there, go and get your hands dirty and get the job done. Yes. I, I, I tend not to see obstacles. I don't really know impossible, you yes. know? And, and, and so, and I've done it even at the association. My, 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 my records at the SBL, thankfully, it's, it's, they are recent. So it's quite, I mean, there for anybody to see what we were able to achieve at the SBL. Yeah. I was chair of the last conference of the association. I co-chaired that conference with another fantastic gentleman, Mr. Gwenga Yobodi, who was chairman, yeah. and also another corporate commercial practitioner. And we told ourselves from day one, not only will this conference be successful in terms yeah. of content, it will be successful commercially. And we returned almost 200 million naira to the association in profit, right? Wow. Wow. So for us, that is the message we, 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 I want to send to the association, that the, 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 the MBA under my watch will not be business as usual, right? Because I take what I do seriously, I take the association seriously. You understand? So I will yes. go get the result. And last but not the least, do not take lightly the fact that I am willing to give all of my time in the 24 months. I have gotten the approval of my partners to take a sabbatical and be there for 24 months. Again, none of my uh, colleagues who are contesting from the same office can even say that they can, they, they can, they can say the same, right? So. <laughs> Um, so that is, those are some of the qualities or credentials that I think stand me out. And then what, 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 what would it benefit any lawyer? It, it, we practice a profession called law. Our profession is essentially regulated by the MBA, right? So our fortunes are dependent on policies and programs of the MBA and how they implement these policies and programs. Be the me and we just had this conversation about stamp and seal, right? Somebody yes. decided to implement it in a certain way. And it has yes. affected in-house counsel in a certain way. Right? Yes. So yes. what it just tells you is that you can't sit down in your little corner thinking that the MBA means nothing to me. As far as you are practicing law in any shape or form in Nigeria, yes. the MBA is important to you. And you should take an interest in what is going on there. So for me, I am saying that I will run an all-inclusive bar. So in-house counsel, uh, uh, young lawyer, women lawyer, you will be in the room making those decisions with the rest the, the leadership, arriving at those decisions with the leadership. That I think stands me apart because I said this and I continue to say it, I'm consistent in, in, in ensuring that we run an all-inclusive, but that's what we need. And last but not least, I make the centerpiece of my, of my, uh, uh, of my message is that my focus will be on the members, hmm. right? And yes. we, we will try as much as possible to continue to play the role that society expects from us or of us, but my, my focus will be on the members. That for me is critical. I, and, I, and I say it, and I make no apologies for it. That will be my focus. The members have to believe again that the association is theirs and it exists for them. Uh, beautiful, sir. Beautiful. I believe, um, I'm sure if, or everybody that's listening to you can, can say they have a better understanding about your vision and your, um, your driving force in, in these elections. But 
a final question I'll just like to ask, which is more on a lighter note, is um, we want to know um, what has been your experience on the electioneering so far? Um, I'm sure before you joined the election, you probably had an expectation. Um, has that expectation been met? What has been your experience so far um, in this election? Well, you know, I, I like adventure. Yes. Right? And this has been one adventure, you know? Uh, it's a huge organization, um, and and uh, it's a big country, you know. And um, you know, and uh, my experience has just been, uh, at least what my take home so far has just been the diversity, you know, and the fact that um, it's a it's a learning curve uh, because you know uh, my people skills have definitely improved, you know, and uh, and um, and. Um, understanding and agreeing that there are many ways to skin a cat. You know, our people say, you know, there are many roads that lead to the market, right? Mm -hmm. And yes. that, com that, that understanding or that realization or that acceptance comes because of the fact that you are dealing with so many people. And so yeah. no idea is necessarily the best idea. You know what I mean? You, you, you know, yes. and accepting that everybody has an opinion and accepting that, um, hey, you know, even if you think yours is the better one, if the job can be done, you know, using the idea put forward by the next man, let me yes. go. You know what I mean? So um, that has been my experience with regard to just this process. Well, that has been one of the experiences, you know what I mean? With, with, with regard to this process, it's a huge organization and it has reinforced my belief that if we organize properly, if we... If we get our act together, we can be a force for so much good. You know, it's a huge organization, and and the passion of our people. You know, our people are so invested in the process. You know, I told you about the conference last year. You know, uh, I was co-chair. Look, I reckon twelve thousand people registered and attended. Wow, that's a, you know, that's, that's massive. It's indicative of the interest the people have. You know, they are interested in the association. It's a product that you don't really need to sell hard. The MBA people, MBA members, they want to, you know, participate, but they are not, they are not happy with what they are getting back. But yes. the interest is, is there. there. But they are just not getting the value. So which is why a lot of them are saying, what's the point? So all you need to do is do a bit more tap into that, you know, um, the, the association will be better for it. The nation, Nigeria, will be better for it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well done, sir. And uh, let me quickly just quickly apologize for taking more time than we actually expected we we're going to take and for finding time um, to speak with us. I know I've taken your no, time and I've no taken problem. the time of, uh, of everybody that has time, um, time been very well spent. <laughs> so um, I, we are almost right now. We'll be done in the next one or two minutes. So I'll just um, allow um, the CEO, I think I missed it, the CEO of um, Kaizen Academy, who has put all this together, to give a vote of thanks. Uh, Ms. Obiageli, moderator. Mr. Yoko, thank you very much for the excellent moderation. Thank you so much. It was quite an excellent. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, hey. it was. Thank you so much. It was quite an excellent party, I must say. I am better enlightened, and I am sure the audience now have a better appreciation of the plans of Mr. Abata for the MBA if elected. On behalf of Kaizen Academy, we want to express our immense gratitude to Mr. Abata for not just this wonderful exposition but for also making our time to parley with corporate counsel at this critical point in time towards the build up of the election of the MBA. We appreciate you, sir. We say thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, you so much, sir. Thank you, we appreciate you, sir. Thank you so much. Also, Mr. Ayoko, back to you again. Thank you also for finding time to moderate this event despite your busy schedule. We also appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. More critically, also, we want to express our immense gratitude to you all, company secretaries, the general counsel, 
legal advisors, members of the press, and also the corporate council as well, for finding time off work to participate in this parley. Also, we thank you, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everybody. It is bye for now. Good afternoon, all. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Right, thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. Bye bye.